Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about keeping your cool. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, as a software developer, how do you keep your cool under pressure when, for example, there are very tight deadlines, etc.? Well, uh, it was trickier when I started uh, software development because when you're a junior you think everything is your fault and it's it, it gets better the better you get at uh, this whole programming thing and the more secure in yourself you get uh, the thing that sort of made me get to a point where I, I don't even feel it anymore I swear like when uh, I can well, basically, look my uh, product owner or my stakeholders in the eye and just say, nope, we're not going to meet this deadline. Without feeling any stress whatsoever over saying it, uh, I can tell you that, at least from my perspective, now I've reached the point where I just don't care anymore. And the reason isn't because I don't care about the project. It is because I've come to, as I've, sa as I, like I've said in other videos, I've come to the realization that the problem is what the problem is. It's that simple. If we could solve every problem by just being better, or just work, clicking the keyboard faster, like the, it, it, then yeah, sure we would, but we can't. So the only thing, the only option that is that remains is always the same thing. Either the problem has to change, or we're gonna have to get more time. These are the only options you ever have. You never have anything else. And when you get to that realization, you truly understand what that means, like really deep in your backbone, you don't feel any stress anymore. Because what basically it comes down to is that, well, you have a certain amount of people on your hands that can do the job. The code is in a certain state as it is. The specification looked a certain way when it started, and yeah, uh, the feature that they want built is a certain thing, and the circumstances for delivering that software is a certain thing, and then you have quality processes and stuff like that. All of these things add up to a time frame, and then of course your personal talent and so forth. And as a junior, you have this tendency, and some. Uh, going to be honest with it to some a certain extent that is true because as a if you're a super senior software developer you can absolutely work faster than a software than a junior software developer can it's but at the same time if you've hired a junior to do the job uh, unfortunately a lot of people make this erroneous thinking that oh just because you're a junior that means that you are the problem for not shipping this on time uh, that usually doesn't happen when it's a senior because you assume that I mean, assuming now that you have a really good senior, then uh, like you, then the, the discussion is different because now you know that the, the like the knowledge thing is not an issue. But s it, it, even with the junior software developer, this does happen because, as I said, the state of the world, the state of the code, the state of all of these things determines how long something's going to take. Uh, as an example, if somebody asks you to move a mountain. Well, there are many ways to do that. It's all going to take time, but you can do it quicker or you can do it slower. Or take a simpler example, if you're going to move a bunch of boxes, well, do you have like a cart or something? Or are you just going to hand lift it? Are you in a wheelchair or, or do you have crutches or are you, are you fully like, a fully fledged uh, like um, uh, um, um, uh, do you have a strong body stuff like that? There are all these factors that determine how fast the situation is going to resolve itself and when you start to see the things that make up the total time something's going to take uh, you just realize that there uh, you, you have you are either doomed to fail at the start of it all or you're going to succeed 
and the only time you know you're going to, if you're like the closer you get to the deadline or like the further ahead you get, the more likely you are to meet the deadline or like the better your estimate is going to be, right? But you know that the estimation of the work is always going to be an estimation. And so the only thing that can actually cause you stress and anxiety in this regard is two things. One is that you yourself take it upon you and blame yourself for not being fast enough and smart enough and stuff like that. And if you have the, this perspective, as I said, the problem is what the problem is, you start to figure out like exactly w how much of the whole time it takes to do something is down to you and like if we can call it that your flaws. I like to say that to the juniors, I have a junior now, the way I try to explain to him because there's a lot of anxiety with him right now, uh, where I tell him, dude, you're doing a great, you're doing a good job, and the fact that you feel like you're being slow and like all of these normal things, it, it really comes down to that you think that you can code away every problem, and you can't, because as I said, there's a difference between moving a mountain and moving a so moving some boxes. The problem is the thing that is going to take time, not the fact that you are not good enough because there's no human being that is going to be so effective at moving shit that they're going to be able to move a mountain in at the same time somebody moves some boxes. Well, I suppose that depends on the mountain and the boxes, but I hope you see my drift. The other thing that can cause this anxiety is that the expectations on you are set by a person who is incompetent or has a stake in that things are going to go faster or so forth, which is usually a stakeholder or a sales rep or like somebody like that. Their pro company needs this to be shipped, etc, etc. And as I said, it comes back to the, those expectations. If the expectations are that you're going to ship this thing on a certain deadline and you cannot do that, whose fault is that? Is it your fault for not being better at your job? Well, you can probably turn that around and say, well, but the people who did all the planning, shouldn't they be better at their job? Like maybe, why is it why is it not their fault that they gave you an unreasonable deadline? Think about it. Who is to be blamed? Because if they had just given you more time, then there would be no stress. There would be no problem with the deadline. But you know, it has to be done now. And instead of checking and making sure that they knew that they could deliver, what did they do? Well, most likely they just said yes because they wanted something and they did not account for the problem because as I said the problem is what the problem is and if you are making estimations or like creating deadlines and stuff like that without having a fairly good understanding of what is feasible and what is not feasible then you will have t tight deadlines and you as I said if it's fi very rare that I find that missing a deadline is an actual problem it's very rare. It's uh, usually that uh, uh, there is this nice quote, uh, most of the suffering that humans go through is just in their heads or something like that. And that is usually what it is. Tight deadlines are usually just a mental gremlin that you put on yourself. It's the same thing with crunch time and all this bullshit that people use in order to somehow, I don't know, you write shit your code faster. Because that's the thing, right? You, if you increase the development speed and cut more and more, you, you just cause more corner cutting and all that stuff. And sometimes that's appropriate because you have to. But in many cases, there is the, the, it's this weird, well, it's, it, it's it, it, idiotic if you ask me at the very least. Because after you've done all of this, well, here is a bunch of legacy code. Congratulations, you now just caused more damage than if you just made sure that you did a good job on the first try. So, what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I keep my cool under pressure is very simple. I've worked for long enough now that I know that if we miss a deadline, it's sure as hell not because I didn't do a good job, usually. Because I've shipped so many projects now that I know that my skills, or like as a software developer, I can produce at a rate that is at the very least on par with what most would consider an experienced software developer. And that may be begs the question, if I then have a deadline that I cannot meet, and if I am able to produce at a speed that is on par with like what is could be expected of somebody who has been doing this for quite some time, where is the problem? Is the problem me? 
well, it's that's sort of like saying that the problem with why your movers aren't faster when they're moving your boxes is that they're not all bodybuilders or you know professional athletes or stuff like that. There is something that I I like to call there's reasonable expectations, and if you know for a fact that you will perform and meet like you do well under reasonable expectations, then the deadline is uh, missing. The deadline is never your fault. It cannot be your fault because the, as I said, the problem is what the problem is. You didn't write all uh, most likely all the code like you're not in control of the new expectations that came in and so forth because there's all these things that make up the deadline and how long things take and you don't control all of those things but as usually as a junior you think that you are the only thing that is causing the problem because you are quote unquote not fast enough yes in some cases that is the situation because you simply t you need more time than like a senior software developer but then you can also ask yourself why the fuck did they hire you if they needed a senior? Have a great day.